Why did the Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi constantly break the Jedi Code when in lightsaber combat? Greetings again, Acolytes, and welcome back to the Archives. Kenobi is known for being a stickler for the Jedi Code. As a Padawan, he often butted heads with Qui-Gon, who was looser with the standard of Jedi protocol when the situation called for it. This trend continued into Kenobi's knighthood and mastery when he ran aground with Anakin for the same reasons. But even after the fall of the Jedi, Obi-Wan still preserved the Jedi way within his heart and made sure to follow as many of its precepts as possible in a post-Jedi galaxy. Yet, all throughout his life before and during the Clone Wars, we have noticed a strange reoccurrence. Obi-Wan is seen breaking the Jedi Code when in lightsaber combat and frequently attempting to use illegal moves and getting away with it. Although Dooku once described sensing Kenobi in the Force as a gateway into a peaceful meadow, it seems that Obi-Wan has a bit of a darker side to him a side which only shows itself when his emotions get high during a duel, and it seems that although Obi-Wan is fully aware of it, he does make mistakes in lightsaber combat and frequently breaks the Jedi Code in order to beat his enemies. So why is this, and what is the lesson that we can learn from Obi-Wan Kenobi? The first thing we should cover is the Jedi approach to combat and the various marks of contact in a lightsaber duel. The Jedi, as you know, are all about preserving life as much as possible and being as merciful in combat as the situation allows it. Oftentimes, they are encouraged to disarm or disable an opponent while keeping their harder emotions in check. There are specific moves which directly navigate this, such as Sun Gem, which is the way of slicing an opponent's weapon or damaging it in a way that forces them to drop it. This is often the most valuable kind of move for a Jedi. If not possible, the next best option is the Cho Mei, which is the way of severing the hand holding the weapon. Although Luke disagrees, this was considered a merciful way to end combat. But if no options to end combat peacefully present themselves, and an opponent must be killed, which is always a last resort, the Jedi were allowed two marks of contact to accomplish this goal. The first was known as the Shi'ak, a precise thrust directly through the center of the chest, a quick, clean killing blow, which would theoretically cause the least amount of pain. This was the preferred method that the Jedi Council always encouraged every Jedi to take. If possible, the less savory option would be known as the Sai Cha, the way of relieving an opponent's head from their shoulders. While decapitation was an unfortunate way to end a conflict, it was still preferred since it was still quick and relatively painless. With that said, there are two lightsaber marks of contact which are forbidden for a Jedi to use on living beings, and they both just so happen to be Kenobi's specialties. The first is known as the Sai Talk. This is what Battlemaster Scarch Vanuk wrote in the Jedi Path about this. Psy Talk slices an entire body into two halves. This act is rightfully considered barbaric, an evidence of the furious emotions of the dark side. Unless you're fighting droids, no student of mine should ever use a Psy Talk. The second is the Mo Ki, which is the act of slicing through multiple limbs at once. To slice through a leg, called a Cho Mok, is already a move which is discouraged according to Master Vonk. There is no situation in which a Jedi should perform a Mo Ki given that many other options should be at their disposal. Tragically though, a Padawan Obi-Wan actually agrees with him by writing this, I can't see ever using such a mark. But in fact, Obi-Wan would proceed to attempt to use both of these moves at various points in his life. The first and the most obvious time when he used a side talk was against Maul on Naboo. Just like the Master stated, which is that it's evidence of furious emotions, Obi-Wan was vengeful over how Maul had gutted Qui-Gon. Although his rage unbalanced him and caused him to get tossed down the pit, we can see Obi-Wan's anger returning when he spots Qui-Gon's lightsaber. As soon as he made the leap over Maul's head, there was plenty of time for him to choose to instead to attempt to perform a Sai Cha instead, decapitating the Sith Lord and ending the duel that way. Maul's lightsaber was down at his side while he was stunned, and Obi-Wan was moving extremely quickly. There was no reason for Kenobi not to take this option, but instead, the Padawan wanted to watch the life fade out of Darth Maul's eyes. He wanted to make sure that the Sith had time to know that he had been killed by a Padawan, so the Jedi Obi-Wan instead gave in to anger and bisected his opponent. Now, we are never told that the Jedi Council ever reprimanded Obi-Wan for doing this. At the time, they were so stunned at the return of the Sith and that they were still in existence that Kenobi was mainly commended for slaying Maul. The exact methods he used were brushed under the rug, but it seems that Obi-Wan had time to reflect on his actions, and we can see that once he starts practicing Sarisu and choosing to be more defensive in combat, 
he switches up his blade work dramatically. While still incorporating some offensive maneuvers of Ataru, Kenobi chooses to instead go for disarmament rather than dismemberment. While it isn't actually explored in words, we can definitely tell by the way Obi-Wan fights in the Clone Wars that he was ashamed of the way that he had killed Maul. He tries to clean up his lightsaber combat, fight fairly, and he constantly tries to preserve as much of the opponent's body as possible. There are several points in his fights with Ventress and during his duel with Pre Vizsla where he has an opening to make a strike but chooses not to. Instead of taking opportunity attacks, Obi-Wan constantly tries to force his opponent to surrender by disarming them and then using a well-placed force push or a kick. But all of that effort goes away when Obi-Wan again has another crack at Maul. At several times during their duel in the Clone Wars, he attempts to go for the Sith Lord legs, even attempting a Mo Key, but Maul is able to avoid them, jumping over them, and delivering a rough kick of his own. Maul even recognizes Obi-Wan's ruthless blade work and starts goading him by talking about how he gutted Qui-Gon Jinn. Maul is able to sense Kenobi's rage, a rage which has been slowly cooking by the fires of the Clone War. Kenobi would later write about the Clone Wars changing the Jedi and how it even changed him, causing him to compromise his own morality and choices concerning mercy. This even continues during his second duel with Darth Maul and Savage Opress. After Savage brutally murders Adi Galia, Obi-Wan gives into his rage again and kicks Savage down before attempting to strike him while he's on the ground. But the move that he tries to do isn't a simple thrust, but instead, he slashes downward with his full blade right at Savage's chest. This is a vertical side talk, something that is considered a Sith technique, and had Maul not blocked this strike, Obi-Wan would have fully broken the Jedi code in a way which grounds for expulsion. This is far from the worst though, as we must address the Bantha in the room, the triple Mo Key that Kenobi performs against Anakin on Mustafar. This is the moment that makes his earlier comment on Mo Key much more tragic, but this is actually a fascinating moment because Kenobi's action was not taken out of rage like before. During his fights against Vader, Kenobi is able to match his gem so using his Sarisu, his familiarity with Anakin's style saving his life. But the issue was, he was losing steam while Vader was growing stronger. By the time he stopped for the high ground on the beach, it was quite literally the will of the Force. There wasn't much left that he was able to do to Vader, because Anakin knew all of Kenobi's moves. Obi-Wan jumped to the high ground and baited Anakin's arrogance, knowing that Anakin would try to kill him the way that he had killed Maul, to prove that he was better than his master, and could prove that just as a Padawan Obi-Wan defeated Maul, Vader too would slay Kenobi. But Obi-Wan gave him a warning. The exact move that Obi-Wan was planning was not out of anger, but one of desperation. Vader was unstoppable, and this fight could not continue any longer, or Kenobi would lose. He couldn't bring himself to kill Anakin, so he had to disable him. The Mo Key, a move which was said to have no situations in which it was a valid option, became the perfect choice for this specific occasion. Anakin would have never expected Obi-Wan to pull off something like this. Completely disabling Vader was the only way to survive the wrath of the Chosen One and ensure that his fate was left up to the will of the Force. And so, acting upon the Force, Obi-Wan was actually following the Jedi way in this moment. Of course, from a certain point of view. Beyond this though, Obi-Wan would learn from his mistakes, and his blade work does not have a savage ending. On Tatooine, Kenobi chooses to follow the Jedi way closer than ever and preserve the Order. He was ruthless when it came to defending Luke and the Lars homestead, but he promised to do it as a Jedi always should. He would actually redeem himself of his harsh ways in the moment where he said he felt the greatest draw towards the dark side. There was a time when the Tusken Raiders were threatening the Lars home, and Kenobi was of course at their defense. But in that moment, he felt his strongest pull to the dark side that he had ever felt in his entire life. All of the emotions of Order 66, the betrayal of Anakin, the loss of his own master, and all of the trauma of the war came rushing out like a broken dam. He wanted nothing more than to give in, to let loose cutting down each and every Tusken Raider, the same way Anakin had once done. But in a valiant moment of true light side courage, Kenobi steeled himself away and brought his mind back from the brink of the dark side. Instead, the Jedi cut their Gaderfi sticks in half and began cutting gashes into their clothing. In Tusken culture, it was disgraceful to show bare skin, so Obi-Wan began cutting their clothes, and the Tuskens began to retreat for fear of shame. From that point onward, 
the Tuscans began spreading the tale of the powerful wizard who defeated an entire tribe without killing a single one of them. Their fear of this legend from this point on kept all of the Tuscans from ever bothering Luke in the Lars homestead. So in the end, Obi-Wan showed the true nature of the Jedi, showing mercy with his lightsaber, proving that although the Jedi may be gone, the Jedi way would live on in Kenobi. So, tell us my friends, had you ever noticed how savage Obi-Wan was in lightsaber combat? If not, does it surprise you how often he broke the Jedi code? And let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on this, and why he decided to do it frequently to win duels. As always my friends, thank you so much for visiting the channel, and may the force be with you always.